Okay, so pistons are back on. Cylinder mating surface is prepped. I'm going to give this one more quick wipe. Then I'm going to drop the gasket onto here, and then I'm going to hit it with, uh, so I'm going to glue the bottom side of the gasket, drop that on, then prep the jugs. Uh, sorry, that took so long. I'm sitting here trying to think. I did not remove the O-rings on the bottom of these yet. So these I need to dig out of there. That might take a little bit, but we'll get the camera rolling while I mess around with that. Then we got a ton of just quick little cleanup on this. Wipe the jugs out one more time. Assembly lube on there. Assembly lube on the rings. Then we can drop the cylinder onto the motor. Okay, so first thing we're going to have to do is get the base gasket out of here. I was all ready to cut this with a knife. Look at this fancy packaging. Looks like they want you to be able to take it apart. Let go. Let go. There we go. Fresh gasket. The other advantage of drinking lots of beer, or soda, whatever it may be, is cardboard boxes. Why do you want big cardboard boxes? Well, when you need to prep a gasket, and I do have another piece of cardboard that I use regularly for this. Too old, dried out. That's okay. On to the next one. This one's soft, brand new. Gasket glue, not RTV, not sealer, nothing crazy. That's what it should look like. Super, uh, I'm not even going to describe what this actually looks and feels like. Thick, white, sticky, figure it out. Anywho, uh, we're going to prep the bottom of this gasket. Like so. This is the bottom side. This is what's going to go onto the case. And I'll show you how you know the difference. Technically, I guess you could flip the gasket around too, but I'm going to run this one on the bottom. Nice thick coat of white sticky goodness. This is all cleaned on the bases, so we're going to do one little bit down here too. The nice thing about this stuff, if it squishes at all, it does not fall into the motor and stay big and clumpy like RTV does. Anything that drops into the motor from this stuff will disintegrate and chew itself up without clogging all the oil passages on the inside of your motor. Good thing that's glued and stuck. And if you don't believe me, hopefully that shows up on camera. No, it doesn't. Look at that. It's like I planned to drop more things like I always do. But this will hold the gasket in place exactly where we want it to be. A couple more quick little spots I gotta hit on here, like I said. This gasket's soaking it up pretty well. So we're going to do this. It's a nice little barrier layer. Not as thick as a silicone or a copper coat would be. But we'll ensure a good gasket mating surface seal. Like I said, the cases on this are actually in really good shape. No big gouges or anything like that. So... Now she's glued. On these Hondas, let me move you guys back just a little bit. We're going to take my string of zip ties and snake the chain through first. Then, if you notice on the outside, you got these little grooves for the dowel pins. All of these will go over the cylinder studs. So let me catch one edge, try and center up the chain. A buddy here would also come in handy as well, but we'll get it over the first couple threads and start working it down. Make sure the chain stays centered. Once we're past the threads, get it over the upper pistons. 
Then we gotta just make sure we can clear the lower pistons and rings. Like so. And then center it up on the dowel. I just realized I don't have the dowels here. That's inconvenient. Okay, well this is glued. There's two little dowels that go in the bottom of the cylinder right here. Unless they're in the cylinder, maybe I got lucky. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. We'll find out in a little bit. But uh, definitely has to go down this side up because you have a bigger boss casting here than you do on this back side. They are not even. So you guys can see that. Look at the gasket thickness here versus the section up here around the stud. So it has to go that way. These are your dowel pin alignment marks. But with the gasket glue, one of the reasons I like that is even just running my fingers over this, it is going to stick that gasket to the case. Okay. Now, I think once this is glued in, I don't have to worry about this thing moving on me. We got a nice sealed gasket there. I didn't, I will glue the top of this too before we do final assembly. But as of right now, this is going to have to stay because one, still got to pull those O-rings out of the base of the cylinders. And two, if I don't have these dowel pins here, I'm going to be really upset. And this is going to turn into a two day video instead of getting all of this put together. And I might start putting the head back together tonight instead. I wanted to get the jugs on. That's been my goal for the last couple days, but I've just been so busy running around doing other stuff too, work wise and whatnot. But this is good to go. Fresh base gasket, which was leaking like a sieve before. Super dry rotted and hardened. Now we got a nice fresh gasket on there. Good to go. Okay, so I do not have the dowel pins for the motor that I just said that I need. These are, I'll show you up close here. Here's the base of the cylinder. Here's the little passages. There are little dowel pins that drop into both sides of this. It's also an oil passage, but I don't have the pins with me. Brought the upper head stuff for the push rod bolts. I did not bring those pins, which are sitting in a bag at the shop. And at this juncture, I really do not feel like driving over there and grabbing them, even though it's not that far away. But like I said, I left the O-rings in here. This is a soft rubber O-ring that goes at the base of each one of these cylinders. Well. They were really, really difficult to get out. Even with a small pick or an X-Acto knife, it gets really hard to break these out. We powder coated and blasted this, which means that this was baked. When you take rubber, soft rubber, and put it in an oven at 400 degrees, it gets really hard and brittle and snaps, which makes removal way easier than trying to do it prior. So we'll just take a sharp pick, run it around these cylinders, and break up all the hard plastic chunks because the rubber is now plastic. A little bit more work, but it's easier than wear safety glasses because that hit me right in the eyeball. A lot easier to get out than the hardened rubber or the aged rubber that seizes in there.
gaskets are all out of here. The rubber is all gone. Just got a bunch of little plastic and rubbery bits. So we're gonna hit this with compressed air. Everything else is cleaned up. I just got to brake clean and re-wipe the cylinders one more time before we put these back on. Crazy high pressure or anything, my compressor's not on, and it's really annoying, and I don't want to listen to it. So now we'll look over at our gasket kit. And we gotta find some O-rings. Gaskets, 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 head gasket, the important one, valve cover gasket. All right, rocking the boat here. This is what we need. A ton of O-rings on these motors. One, two, three, four, all the rocker the valve adjuster ones, two. There's four, so we're good to go here. Come back over to the motor. These will drop right onto the cylinder. They're O-rings, so they will stretch a little. You do want them to kind of be comfortable, so when you unwind them like I just did, Try and keep them relatively straight, but if you just kind of work your thumbs around them, they'll find their home, level out, and live there through several heat cycles until they solidify like the last ones were. I'll show you guys this one. We're all done too. Now, I'm going to take the back side of this pick and just kind of walk it around where I can't put pressure on it. I'm not poking down into the gasket at all. I'm literally using the flat side of this, just trying to compress it down to where it wants to go. You don't want to overly compress it. You do want this to hang, kind of hang up a little bit. Not hang up, but you want it relatively flush. Just make sure it's seated in the bore or the machined ring around these cylinder skirts. I'll turn it around once more for the last one. You can see it kind of bulge up like that. That's what we're trying to get out. Just like that. Now, we are at a weird point because I do not have what I need for this. And by that, I mean I don't have the dollar pins, so I can't final assemble this. I do want those in there as a guide. However, since we glued the gasket, I don't have to worry about this walking around a ton. But what I can do now is go through and lube these piston rings and then align them and drop these cylinders on. I have not done a four cylinder motor like this in a really long time. I do not have a piston ring compressor small enough to compress the rings smoothly on each one and I have to do two at the same time. This could get interesting, so if it gets split up into two videos and you're watching the first one, if you're watching the base gasket prep and cylinder prep and things like that, that's probably why it'll end up most likely getting time-lapsed and watch me struggle while I try and wrestle these cylinders back on this all together. Much easier to pull off than put on. I'm gonna walk you through the first step on one piston. I'm only gonna do this outer one because it's too hard to film the rest of them. 
I'll have the camera going while I prep the rest of these, but here's my process. Assembly lube. We are going to try and get some of this onto the piston ring area. I don't care about where the ring gap orientation is yet. I hate this part, but I try and keep one hand that's going to get dirty and covered in oil. The assembly lube is super, super tacky, so we're going to wipe down the pistons a little bit. Actually, we're going to do a tiny bit more here because I don't mind if it gets on the actual piston too, like so. And I'm going to walk these rings around, coat them in oil. A little on the piston doesn't hurt. Whatever runs down from this is okay. Now we have one oily luby piston. If you notice, let's see what shows up on here. We'll go right through those studs. Hopefully that will continue to show up. But if you notice the bottom oil ring gap is right here. We're gonna leave that right there. Then we're gonna go to the second ring. I don't care that the top ring is moving yet, but the ring gap on the second ring right here. I'm going to set this off to the left side, opposite of this. So instead of the oil ring being here, we're going to go over to this side of the piston for the second ring. Right there. And then we're going to stagger the top ring to the corner over here. So essentially, if you're looking at the top of the piston, oil rings gap is here, top ring gap is here, and then the uh, middle ring is going to be over here. A couple ways to do that. On uh, When you got three, you just want to stagger them. You don't want to have a straight line stacked of piston rings. So I'm going to do that one, and I'm going to come over here and do number four the exact same way. That's okay. That'll coat the whole piston. Like I said, try and keep one hand, the oil hand. But we'll do this pretty much the same way. Oil rings over on your corner where you guys are standing. Second ring will cock over to this side and then the top ring will come back to this back side. I'm fairly certain that wherever I put these, and you really don't want a ton of oil up on the, sorry, you really don't want a ton of oil on the crown of the piston, it's all gonna burn and smoke off and carbon up the pistons themselves, so I might wipe those down once we are all done. But I'm only gonna do these two for right now because, eh, I guess it really doesn't matter, maybe I can do all four. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna do all four. So, in order to do that, I'm going to rotate this up a little bit on the crank. If you didn't notice, the whole crank is free spinning because we have nothing blocking it. So, then we'll do number three and two, then we'll rotate it over one more time. A little oil there, a little oil here. Coat the rings, walk them around. Some oil on the skirts of the piston. Again, I'm not overly concerned about the skirts. If I get some on there, cool. But I'm also going to be lubing up the cylinder walls themselves before all of this goes back together. So, walk it in, get the oil behind the ring land too. So set that one there. Second ring comes over here. Third ring will come back. I think now that this is up, now that the inner two cylinders are up, I think I'm going to try and keep them there. And we'll drop the middle two cylinders on first and I'll come back to the final assembly part because I don't have those the stupid dowel pins. Two little dowel pins are stopping me from putting this entire thing back together. Super, super annoying.
completely overlooked it when I left the shop earlier today. But there we have it. Pistons are coated. Let's go back over to the cylinder, get that one lubed up, and start dropping this on to slide down. As I said, the bottom of this cylinder is blasted really lightly, but we removed all the gasket area. Just gonna do a quick little spray down with brake clean. My hands are still covered in oil, so wipe those down, or were still covered in oil. But we'll run a rag through these one more time. Do two at a time. See how it's still coming off with dirt and grime and debris. We're just trying to get all of that off. Like so. Same thing on the other one. You want this as clean as possible for final assembly. Do this so it doesn't make a mess. Find a clean section on the rag, so we'll flip this inside out. We'll flip her over at the bottom sides of the barrels. I'm used to a shovel head where your whole hand fits in the barrel tightly, but it does. Now, we are ready to go on this. Back to the assembly lube part. So, same thing. Just cleaned a hand, but now we're going back to a dirty one. Just going to coat the cylinders on the bottom and let this run down a little bit. We'll work our way down from the top. You don't need to go crazy, crazy in my opinion on this. But, you want enough coverage for that initial startup before the oil pump gets oil all the way into the cylinders. If everything is set up and working correctly, that should not take very long anyway. This is literally just your safety barrier for the initial, if you got to crank it a little bit or whatever else. It's got brand new rings that are super sharp, cylinders that are freshly honed. And most of this will scrape very quickly regardless, in my opinion. But on cylinders, you actually want contact. It's supposed to rub. It's supposed to be kind of tight. So I'm going to do a much smaller portion now on the top side. Gravity will flow all of this back down over time, but it is really tacky. So Let's see how sticky this stuff is. I'm using a Permatex Ultra Slick. There's a million different kinds out there. I like this one. Uh, I got Lucas Assembly Lube, semi-synthetic, the green stuff too. I've used Torco stuff in the past as well. I don't know. Some of them are supposed to hold up better over long extended periods of time. This is cheap and readily available. This is the other one I use. And then I've run the Molly style stuff too, the tube, toothpaste tube. I don't remember who makes that one. But that works too. Not picky. Just get some pre-assembly on there for peace of mind. Give this a quick wipe on the top. Not that any of this is going to be finalized right now. Because we're going to have to wait one more day. But cylinders have enough oil. Now we're ready to drop this onto the motor. Let me re-preface this by saying, if I knew that I forgot the dowel pins before I started gluing the gasket, I would have wanted to wait until that was completely done and ready to put back together. I messed up, which means I gotta deal with that. This is glued in, so that'll stay. I'm not overly worried about it. The dowel pins aren't that big of a deal. The hardest part I have right now is trying to wrestle two pistons into that cylinder at the exact same time. The one caveat to that is this is a bone stock cylinder. It's not overboard. It's not punched out at all, at all, at all. All we did was rehone and fresh ring a set of cylinders. I don't think you can actually go that big on a motor like this since everything's so tiny already, but 
And what happens is it gets a lot more difficult once you start doing bigger overbores because hopefully this shows up on camera. See the chamfer cut into the bottom of these? Let's focus. Come on, focus, focus. This is a pretty hard taper. Uh, 30 some degrees, maybe 40, 30 something. No, it's probably more than that. 45, 50 degrees? I don't know. Don't have an angle finder, don't have a way of measuring that right now off the top of my head. Doesn't matter. All that matters is this actually does have a pretty big taper to it, which should help me substantially in dropping these cylinders back on here. When you get into bigger bores, that taper gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So on Harley stuff, when you get into the majorly overbore style scenario, well, it gets substantially harder to get the pistons in, especially without a ring compressor. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this jog all the way on here with this set up the way it is. I'm going to try and leave the chain down. I'm going to try and line two pistons up here and wrestle this. I have no idea if this is actually going to work. I'm going to try my best. This could take a while. This could go horrible, and it might not get done. I have no idea yet. I do not have any ring compressors or any tools small enough to clamp these down. I do have a couple hose clamps that I could resort to if I really need to, but I'm trying to avoid that. In the past, I've had pretty good luck trying to wrestle this stuff together without the tools, so we're going to try it that way first. If it doesn't work, we'll move on. All right, we're going to try and pound these cylinders on. And by that, I mean delicately and gently. We're not going to pound anything because it's internal stuff with piston rings. So we're going to gotta wobble this down as best we can and this is gonna suck and exactly why I got into doing Harley stuff because all of these wanna wiggle like so so we got two in I don't know if I need to do two at a time or all four so let's try this and see what happens a whole lot of Chamfer line up, make sure it's not on the skirt. Maybe I'm better off doing all four of these at once. I have no idea. This is Honda things. And I work on Harleys. One carb is easier than four. Two separate cylinders, individual, are better than four for working on them. I think that's all right. Crank kind of leveled itself out. The only other advice I have, if you are doing this block, I did just grab a hammer with a piece of wood underneath the upside down oil filter housing to steady it a little bit more. But I'm pretty happy with that. So now we're going to work a pick a little bit and screwdriver, work this around the jugs, and start trying to get this to seat. Like I said, big chamfer should help quite a bit. Biggest issue is just making sure that all of these stay squared up in the bore. So on the back side, just kind of pressing or compressing the ring. The chamfer is big enough to make that a little bit easier. Work it all the way around. One ring at a time. If you're a Honda guy and watching this and I'm doing this completely wrong, let me know. I'm well aware of that, but I won't be offended. Gentle, gentle, more gentle, less gentle.
big part here is don't snag a ring and crack one. Why would anybody want to do four-cylinder things? This is stupid. All right, down to the oil rings. This bank is pretty much all the way down. This one getting hung up a little bit on this side. Work your screwdriver in if you need to. Now, on the stupid Honda stuff, you got to sneak this chain back up, and this is what we don't want to drop back in the motor past this point. So, got the chain through, now i got to get my zip tie string back up here, like so. This will stay out, hopefully, loop it around the jug. And from here, I can't go all the way down because I do need to come back in this and put the dowel pins in. If I had the dowel pins, this would drop all the way down right now. I hope slash think. Soft, gentle love taps. And that should leave me enough room to slip a dowel pin back in. That'll center it up on the base of the block. Hold this up, so I'm going to re-glue this little corner. The gasket didn't shift at all, but the cylinders are back on. Two stupid dowel pins, two little parts about yay big, are stopping me from finishing this bottom end. Bottom of the top end. Okay, not as bad as I thought it would be. I just talked to Justice, whose bike this is. He's over at the gym. He's just about done. Gonna run to the shop, grab a bunch of stuff. So hopefully this can go back together. That might not happen tonight. If he comes by with the two dowel pins I need, then we'll lock down the rest of the cylinder stuff. At least call that a wrap. I would feel much better if this was kind of closed off anyway since it's been open for so long. And maybe mess around with the head. I don't know if that's gonna be on tape if he's coming by here. I'm gonna show him how to do one exhaust port and then have him kind of go to town tomorrow. So there's that. Okay. Dowel pins have arrived. That's all we needed to finish this up. So these go into the two holes, one on each side of the cylinders. That is it. I'm gonna gasket glue this real quick, not filming that. Then we're gonna tap this all the way down. Bottom of the top end is done.
All the way around? Yeah. Why don't you do the others? Give that a left tap. All the way down evenly. Jesus Two on that. It doesn't matter. That's what the zip tie's for. No, this. Oh, you want the nice one? <laughs> what did you do to this bag? I didn't. It's been broken. I took the shitty shop one back. You want the you nice did? one? How did you do that? I don't know. I hit metal things that were sharp. You want to do it in tandem? Mine's bigger. That's it. That's all we got. I can't do anything on the head, but that'll at least glue the gasket together. <laughs> I've never done racing hammers. I also didn't realize how small that hammer was. Well, there you have it. Everything I anticipated this night did not work out as planned. I don't know which video this is, so I'm gonna do like four of these. Not that that matters to you. Shop partner came by, grabbed the dowel pins for the top end of this motor, and then finally got to look at all of the work that I've been doing on this and realize that the silver that we just coated, which probably is the most accurate for what it would have looked like, doesn't match. So we might do a little bit of rattle canning. I would like to have disassembled and completely rebuilt this, but if you're a motor guy or if you're an engine guy, I have a perfectly good bottom end, perfectly good transmission, no major issues on this. Why well, tear it apart? Everything I tear apart, the more stuff I take out, the more stuff is gonna get replaced, and there goes the budget, and there goes every other part. Bottom end is rock solid. Fresh coat of paint on this, on the cases especially, it's not gonna see as much of a heat cycle. It's not gonna see as much of a leaky oil fuel problem, in theory, because everything else will be fixed. So a quick coat of paint should last quite a while. That's where we're at, but the heads are finally fully pushed down, not finalized or torqued, but they are done. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one.